Hello everyone, Mr. Porter here again. Uh, we are uh, going to be going over, in fact, you are going to be uh, looking today at uh, uh, Unit 7.4 uh, and that, uh, as far as uh, I can see, goes uh, goes into uh, World War I, uh, what was happening in World War II as well. And uh, we're uh, looking uh, at, at these vocabularies, these uh, terms and, and words, and um, you, uh, you are going to uh, have uh, some things such as volunteerism in World War I. Um, volunteerism in World War I, uh, you know, you think, you know, obviously people are going to be volunteering for the Army and the Navy and that sort of thing. Well, yes, that happened. Uh, but also, they were volunteering uh, in World War I, especially if they couldn't qualify to be in the service. They were, uh, they were uh, volunteering for humanitarian. And usually that took, um, I guess, a role with the Red Cross, uh, the International Red Cross. Those were the ones, they really didn't have uh, so much uh, medics and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, the way they had in World War II uh, and field hospitals and that sort of thing, uh, where it, it would be the International Red Cross that would go out and get, get the, the, the bodies and get the, um, uh, get the uh, wounded uh, out on the field, uh, as it were, uh, as far as uh, no man's land was concerned. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting in that regard that uh, a lot of people did volunteer for that. Um, ambulance drivers, truck drivers, hospital workers, flyers, doctors and nurses, that sort of thing. I think I turned it down just a touch too, too far there. There we go. Um, and that's essentially right after the war broke out in 1914. And so that was even before the United States was in it. Uh, now, uh, Hoover, uh, uh, Herbert Hoover was president of the United States uh, from 1929 to 1933. Uh, he, um, he was uh, known as uh, Do-Nothing Hoover, and it was mainly because he did nothing. He sat there and, you know, he tried a couple of things, but they were very minor uh, and really didn't work. Um, you had, you know, first thing that happened was the stock market crash and uh, in, uh, in October of 1929. And lo and behold, that wasn't the only thing that was wrong. Uh, he uh, thought that that was the only thing that was wrong, but there were a myriad of, of things we'll, that we'll find out in Unit 8. Uh, there were a myriad of things, and uh, the acronym that we use for uh, all of the things that were wrong is Mouse Buster, M O W S B U S T E R. Uh, and so, if you just count the letters in that acronym, <laughs> there were a lot of problems. And uh, thinking that that just having the stock market rebound uh, and everything would be hunky dory, uh, that didn't work very well. Uh, and in fact. Uh, you know, the, the uh, country sank deeper into the Depression. Uh, you know, it's interesting, this, this little phrase that's actually uh, on the vocabulary sheet, heatless, meatless, wheatless days, that's, that's what it was. It was from, from a song, um, the, the heatless, meatless, wheatless days of Hoover. Do 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 do, and uh, and they you know they changed the lyrics to a popular song is what they did and uh, and it took uh, that's that's uh, what was uh, interesting. Now rationing of World War II, I'm really not going to go over that uh, in this video. Uh, you'll be watching a video, uh, I believe, uh, is it. Uh, Today, yes, it is. Uh, after this is over, uh, you'll be watching. Uh, you'll be watching another video, uh, which is about a half hour long, 
and um, and it's it's amazing uh, in that it goes over. It's about a half hour, uh, you know, twenty nine minutes or so. And and what is amazing about it is it goes over not only the rationing uh, in World War II, but what the people were having to do uh, to make up for the rationing. And people were, you know, there, there were some people that, you know, kind of played the system. Uh, you know, people that had more children uh, could get more stuff, obviously, uh, because of the number in their families. But uh, there were people who, I guess, uh, made up families, if you want to say that, uh, and uh, took phony birth certificates and and whatnot to get more stamps so that they get could get more food uh, during during World War II. But but we'll we'll see what uh, you know what shakes out in in that video. Uh, it was a report by Eric Severide, uh, who used to be one of the major television reporters uh, for CBS News, along with Walter Cronkite. So uh, you'll uh, you'll like that. Um, now the conservation efforts. Uh, you know, in in World War One, it was people were trying to conserve wheat. They were trying to conserve meat, sugar, fats, uh, so those items could be sent overseas. Now, obviously, uh, it didn't. Uh, you know, the, the the war didn't last as long. You know, with with uh, World War Two, it lasted quite a bit longer. It, it was more than double the time uh, of World War One for the United States. Uh, but uh, there was, uh, uh, you know, they were using alternatives like honey uh, or molasses even for uh, sugar uh, and corn or barley for wheat. Uh, so you had corn ground up for flour. You had barley ground up for flour instead of wheat. Um, and, uh, you know, with wheat, uh, there's so much more gluten in wheat, uh, the bread, uh, you know, obviously it wouldn't rise as much, and so you'd have smaller loaves that were uh, maybe about uh, three, three and a half inches instead of those big loaves of, of bread that people were used to having. Um, they said, uh, uh, what was it, uh, memorable slogans, uh, when in doubt, eat potatoes, uh, help us observe the gospel of the clean plate. Uh, meatless Mondays, wheatless Wednesdays, that sort of thing. Um, uh, and interesting, uh, in, uh, in World War II, um, there was um, shortages that happened really uh, from the beginning of the war. Uh, meat, sugar, canned goods, fuel, clothing. Um, and it was amazing. People could buy two pair of shoes a year, and that was it. Um, uh, not only that, but uh, fuel was rationed or gasoline was rationed, where at the beginning of the war, uh, it was people could, could use four gallons a week, four gallons a week. And you have to remember, these were big cars, heavy cars that didn't get very good gas mileage. They weren't running around in a 30 or 35 or 40 mile per, mile, mile per gallon uh, car, okay? They were, they were <laughs> in a uh, seven or eight or nine or 10 gallon uh, mile per hour car, or uh, uh, gallon, uh, miles per gallon car, okay? So they couldn't go very far. You know, uh, a trip to uh, uh, downtown and, and home, that was about it. Um, you know, just, it was like that. And in fact, later in the war, it was changed to two gallons a week. Um, you know, obviously, doctors were exempt from that. Uh, first responders, what we call for first responders today, police, fire, they were exempt from that. Uh, but, uh, you know, ordinary people, uh, by the end of the war, uh, it was down to two, two uh, gallons a week. Um, not, not very much driving going on. Uh, you know, and, and obviously for farm vehicles uh, was, was a little bit different as well. Now, propaganda. 
propaganda was, was going on on both sides. And uh, during the video that you'll be watching after this, you'll notice that there uh, was propaganda put out by, oh, I want to say the, the studios uh, about, uh, and not only the studios, but also caricatures of, of uh, the Germans, caricatures of the Japanese, caricatures of the Italians uh, were, <laughs> shall we say, not very flattering, okay? Uh, very, very, very rough caricatures. Um, and these were also put uh, not only in, uh, in cartoons that were, uh, that were done during, uh, during movies uh, that people would go, go see, but they were also made into posters uh, that were all around town. So, and, and you have to remember too, it wasn't the United States that was doing a, a lot of propaganda. There was a lot of propaganda going on in Japan, a lot of propaganda going on in Germany. I mean, they had a, uh, a minister of information, Joseph Goebbels. Uh, he was not just the minister of information. I mean, he was the chief propagandist. Let's put it that way. That's exactly what he was. He was the chief propagandist. Uh, war bonds and raising taxes. Now, yeah, they, that's what they tried to do. They, they would get celebrities uh, for war bond drives. Uh, and not only would the celebrities, uh, celebrities would, would uh, uh, get people uh, to, uh, to come in and, and buy these bonds, but uh, they'd also uh, give, uh, give autographs to people that would buy a bond. You know that that type of thing, and and it was huge. Uh, and and then uh, you know you have um, taxes, uh, or um, not just regular, uh, you know, the taxes that people would pay on things, but but also uh, income taxes uh, were were increased during that time. And it was all to pay for the war effort, uh, you know, and and that's how they paid for it. Uh, and some borrowing. Uh, you also had a, a Selective Service Act in 1940. It was prior to the U.S. going into the war. Um, and the Selective Service System was started. And I know about that. I, you know, uh, uh, I had to uh, actually register with the Selective Service System, even though the draft had ended right after Vietnam. Uh, but I still, I've, I've got my, uh, uh, my draft card uh, in uh, uh, in my in my safe deposit box, uh, it's interesting that uh, several of my friends uh, in high school burned theirs uh, uh, as a result of uh, something that almost happened during our senior year. Uh, we thought we were going to war with Cambodia uh, because Cambodia seized a ship. Uh, President Ford sent in the Marines, and I had a few friends that were ready to head for Canada. Uh, but you know that was just a small blip, and uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, now um, uh, in the summer of 1980, registration was resumed. Uh, it was uh, you know it was suspended. Registration was suspended early in 1975, and and it was interesting that it was done after I turned 18, so I had to go down and I had to register. Uh, of course, um, uh, but uh, then in the summer of 1980, the registration resumed, and presently, uh, young men must register within 30 days of their 18th birthday, uh, according to federal law. So, uh, just think about think about that, uh, and uh, and I believe that's it. Uh, that's it for for my portion. Of course, the next video you'll be watching uh, has to do with uh, with the uh, the uh, uh, rationing and such during World War II. Uh, they even had scrap drives where they would uh, get scrap metal that would be melted down, used to build tanks, used to build airplanes and such. Uh, and not only that, but uh, they also uh, would have uh, 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 rubber drives 
uh, you know, for uh, for old tires and that sort of thing that would be, uh, I guess, pulverized and uh, and reconstituted and uh, put back uh, into new Jeep tires, uh, new truck tires, that sort of thing. Um, but but uh, uh, anyway, uh, what we're uh, going to be doing uh, is uh, actually, uh, you know, after that video on rationing, after you watch this video and then the video on rationing in World War II, uh, you'll have a Venn diagram to do. And uh, let me just show you real quick. What they... Um, What they had uh, was a uh, this, uh, this Venn diagram here. You'll notice it's just a regular Venn diagram with two two joining circles. Uh, and what I wanted uh, you to do was to look up on uh, on Google uh, the role of government in the economy during World War One and World War Two. Now, obviously. You know, it doesn't matter which one you have for World War One and World War II. That doesn't matter. Uh, what you're going to do is try to find out things about each one uh, that maybe only happened during that time period. Uh, but then the ones that happened in both, obviously, you're going to be going putting it in the middle. Okay. So, so that's uh, that's what we have to to look forward to today. Obviously, you won't be turning this in. Uh, do not turn anything in uh, today. Uh, you will turn it in tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, it needs to be completed. Uh, just, just like you need to, to uh, watch the video on rationing, uh, watch uh, this video. And if you're, if you're listening right now, you're watching this video, obviously, right? So uh, do that and... Uh, uh, that would take up uh, oh uh, at least uh, half, if not more, watching watching these two videos because I'm looking at the time here and we're over 17 minutes. So you know it's 29 minutes for the rationing video. Um, so that's more than half class half the class. So you'll have a good amount of time to work on the Venn diagram. So that's what I would like for you to do uh, is is uh, work. Uh, mostly the rest of that rest of the class on that Venn diagram. You should be able to find quite a few things on on Google. All right. So anyway, that's what we want to do. Uh, look forward to that. We will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.